Yo, what's up? I got a bunch of questions from students about return tracks. So it's not, you don't have to use them, it's not a must, but nonetheless, here are 10 tricks you should know uh, for using return tracks. Let's check it out. Okay, so first off, before we even start, return tracks, you have them right here on the right, if you're in the session view. In arrangement, they're gonna be on the bottom. You can create a return track by right-clicking and choosing Insert Return or Command Shift T. You can have up to 12 return tracks. Okay, and for each return track, you'll also have a send knob right here. If you want to show and hide the returns and send, command option uh, R for returns and command option S to show and hide the sends. Okay, let's go over uh, 10 tricks here. Let's check them out. First one, just classic use of the effects. Let me load this project. Okay, so here we have a beat. Let's just listen. Okay, nice. Now I have a drum group here, and here I have three different drum tracks. Um, one benefit of return tracks is you can add effects on them. For example, in this first one, I have a reverb. It is on 100% wet because we just want just the effect on the return track. The dry signal is the actual original track. I have an EQ to cut the lows and some uh, color limiting. This is a free effect. You just have to download a pack called Creative Extensions just to boost the reverb a tiny bit. So this is kind of like a short uh, room reverb uh, for drums. And the benefit again, let me solo the drums, I can send uh, in different amounts the, uh, each drum uh, track. So let's, uh, let's solo just the return track so we can hear just the reverb. Let's send the main drums. Let's send more the extra drums. And some of the percussion. Nice. Let's mute that without the reverb and with. Okay, allows us to send uh, in different amounts to the same effect so we can use one effect track or return track for multiple uh, tracks. Uh, there's a lot of other uses with uh, return effects. Uh, by default, you get a delay and reverb. Here I just set up a multiband compression, which is just hardcore compression. I have three glue compressors here heavily compressing the signal and an EQ to dip the mids and boost the lows and highs. Let's unmute that. Let's send the entire group of drums. Right here we have a return a send B and let's listen. So without, that's a serious boost. Probably do it a bit less. So this is without and with. Okay, this is more about mixing. You can also use it creatively. On C, I have this pitch hack. Again, a free effect if you download the pack Creative Extensions and just a reverb 100% wet. And let's take, for example, our ARPs here. Let's turn it up. And let's uh, unmute that. This gives us kind of a high pitch octave uh, with reverb. And it's reversed. Maybe we'll turn off the reverse. Really great on pianos, plaques, stuff like that. Nice. So this is just a classic use of return tracks, also known as bus tracks or auxiliary tracks, all of that, uh, where you can send multiple tracks to the same uh, return track and have the return track only have the effect. So you can control the volume of the effect, the panning, and add whatever effects you want uh, to process just that main effect. Reverb, delay, compression, distortion, EQ whatever it may be. Okay, next trick. Uh, this comes from the dub reggae world, where uh, those pioneers of the dub music kind of became studio musicians by playing the effects with the uh, music. Kind of uh, after the recording, they added more of their own production qualities uh, in the tracks a lot with the dub effects. So that means that I'm going to take an effect like reverb or delay and add it on only one in one moment of the song of the track, uh, which can be on a snare, guitar, whatever it may be. Here I have just whatever loop uh, of just kind of like this uh, trap, kind of uh, hyper pop almost. Let's listen. Oh, whoa, what's going on here with the melody? 
I think I have to go. This for some reason the modulation will is here. Let's say make sure it's on. Here we go. So let's say we want the last snare to have a momentary dub effect. So let's first uh, explain why we can put it as an insert effect. That's what it's called when you put it on the track. Why we can do this. So if I want the last snare to have a huge reverb, first of all, first problem is that I have to play with the dry wet. So that means that I'm taking away from the power of the dry signal, of the non-affected signal. So if I do this, uh, let's show automation and let's automate only on the last snare to turn it up. And I do want it to be a very long reverb, so I'm going to bring up the decay. Now, our problem again is that the reverb will only play here. It won't overlap when the loop is looping. Right? A, a reverb goes away. And also, we lost the punch of the snare because we're sending it to the reverb with all the wet. Okay, it's 80%, 85% wet. So that's why we're gonna use a return track for that. Let's create a return track, Command Shift T. Let's load a reverb there. I'm gonna put it 100% wet again because the dry signal is the snare itself. That's the dry reverb, we want it 100% wet. I'm gonna make it super long. And now I'm going to use the send, which we have right here in the arrangement underneath each track. I'm going to use the send and automate the send to just send momentarily to the reverb in the return track, which is always on. And now let's make it really large, big, decay, 20 seconds. That's huge. We're going to hear it uh, just continuously reverbing f uh, even after it loops. Let's listen to that. <laughs> You can still hear the reverb going. Uh, so this is great momentary effects uh, for delays, reverbs. You can put it on one word of a lyric, uh, one drum sound, one synth sound, bass, whatever it may be. Momentary dub effects. Okay, let's check out the next one. Okay, next one is the return track looper. Let's check that out. Um, using the looper device, we can do live looping but it's quite beneficial to put it on a return track because then you can also mute it. So let's uh, load this project and check this out. Okay, so uh, here I have just a few tracks. And before we set up the looper, let me, uh, let's delete the looper here and let's go. I have a few uh, tracks, I'm gonna use my MIDI keyboard here. Okay, uh, I have a bass. And I have also vocals. I have my vocal mic right here. So I'm going to use that. A, A. Okay. Uh, and I have just a main vocal track. This uh, backing vocal, it's called backing. It has uh, just an EQ here and some vocal depth kind of widening effect. This is our main vocal. A, A, A. And it's a drum loop. Okay, now on the return track, we have just an EQ. This actually have this uh, dynamic EQ. I show it in one of my tips in the, on TikTok and Instagram. You can check that out, just vocal EQ. So that means that when I play my main vocals, A, A, whoa, 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 whoa. It turns down automatically some of the mid-high frequencies to clear out some room for my main vocals. Okay, now. Let me put the looper on the return track and we're going to set it up. First, we're going to tell it, just follow song tempo. Let's record just two bars. And uh, let's also put the input and output to never. Never uh, play me what I'm uh, playing live into the looper. Just play me the loops after I start looping. Don't play me my actual playing because we already have the tracks that are playing it in real time. I'm going to send my electric piano Oh, it's not like it's like a layered instrument. My bass and my backing vocals. Now I'm going to do some mapping. So I'm going to use my computer keyboard. You can also use your MIDI controller, a sustain pedal, a foot controller, whatever it is. So let's go keyboard mapping mode. And I'm going to map uh, right here. One, two, three, four. Uh, the arm. So I can use my computer keyboard uh, numbers to arm the diff different tracks. And number five, to mute the drums. And also mute, as you can see, mute the looper return track, which is very useful. That's why we want to put in a return track, give us this extra feature of muting the looping and then bringing it back. 
Uh, I'm also going to MIDI map the looper uh, record button to my sustain pedal that is connected to my MIDI controller. And sustain pedal costs like 25 bucks worth getting them if you're using a MIDI controller. Most MIDI controllers have a connection with sustain pedal. Nice, I'm going to play the loop. And then I'm gonna play some stuff on my keyboard and we'll do some looping here as well. So let me get my sustain pedal and let's play it. I'm gonna switch to the bass. Let's play some bass. Switch to the vocals. Okay, now I'm gonna press my pedal again to go into play mode. I'm gonna arm my main vocals, but before that I can also mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She and me are going, going like that long. I was just rambling, I don't know what to sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. And you and you get the idea. I'm just, whatever, I don't have lyrics right now, I'm just mumbling. But uh, return track looper, very beneficial because you can do those uh, muting of the looping, which is really fun and great. Uh, so put return track on a, put a looper on a return track, input, output, never, and then set up the, send all your tracks that you loop into it and set it up uh, however you want. Nice, let's check out the next one. Okay, here's an easy trick. This comes from the DJ world, beat juggling. So here I have just a break loop. And what we can do is we can open up the crossfade. We can set up uh, the actual track, the audio track to the left side of the crossfader and a return track to the right side of the crossfader. I'm gonna add a delay, just a simple delay on the return track. Let's put it 100% wet, no feedback, and an eighth note, just two, two sixteenth notes. Uh, now, we're going to right click on the crossfader, let's do fast cut, and I'm also going to map, let's go keyboard mapping mode again, you can use your MIDI controller as well, or a fader if you want. I'm going to map the far ends of the crossfader, so this is one, this is two. And now, I can send my uh, break to the return track. Now, we do need to turn on pre-fader right here, pre-fader. The reason is, what happens is, if I play the loop and the cross fader is on the left, everything's cool. But if I go to the right, we lose the signal because it's post-fader. If it doesn't play here, it doesn't get sent to the return track. So we're gonna put pre-fader so it ignores the mixer. It's always sending. Okay, and now I can use one and two. Right, to do that kind of classic beat juggling effect. So that's uh, just a simple trick, beat juggling with the return track. You can of course use a fader, MIDI controller, whatever. So let's beat juggle it, let's check out the next one. Okay, so here we have a just, uh, I'm using contact, it's a really awesome library called Laws. Where is it? Laws. Super cool, kind of like soundtracking stuff, very ambient kind of things. I have a bunch of chords here. I played on the MIDI controller. Okay, nice. I love that last chord. Uh, now, let's say I go to the session. We can see it from here. Let's add a return track. And let's start kind of layering stuff, layer effects, and we'll do some cross routing on the return track. So I'm going to load, let's say a reverb, and let's also cut the lows from the reverb here. Let's do that. I'm gonna send to the reverb, let's solo that. 
I just leave her. Let's boost some stuff here. Okay, I'm gonna add another return track. This time, we're gonna go back and we'll do our pitch hack. Right, you know what? Let's uh, do the same effect as pitch hack, but with a grain delay. Uh, let's do 100% wet, maybe like 40 milliseconds, take the frequency down, and let's bring it up in pitch 12 semitones. Uh, and now I'm gonna send a reverb signal to the delay. So I do need to enable send here, and I'm gonna send it to it. And let's solo that as well. Nice. So now we're just sending the, return, the reverb to the grain delay. We can continue. Let's add another one. This time, let's add a kind of a heavily modulated uh, signal. Auto pan, uh, phaser, uh, chorus. Let's do ensemble so it's cleaner. And we'll also do like a hybrid reverb with some convolution thing here. Let's do textures like a jet wash blanket. I have a trick on TikTok or Instagram, if you check it, for piano, river, uh, ambient piano using this uh, uh, impulse response, this IR. Let's uh, enable C, let's send it to C. Nice, we do need to turn stuff up, so let's me put uh, a utility after the, we'll boost it, there we go. Nice, so now we added a lot more thickness uh, and size with just return tracks that are going to each other. It's kind of serial processing, but still each one, we have volume, panning, all of those. Let's add a utility also, this one. So, uh, as you can see, you can kind of uh, send return tracks to each other. Now let's see what happens if we send return track to itself. Let's check out the next trick. Okay, so here I have just a wavetable. Default sound, just playing one note. And we're going to take one return track, we're going to put reverb on it, and we're going to do a feedback loop. So uh, create some feedback uh, effects. Uh, for sound design, ambient, textures, drones, stuff like that. But because it's a feedback loop, very important that we put a limiter. Okay, so make sure you keep your ears safe, your speakers, your headphones. Uh, it's just a feedback loop so you can go crazy. So uh, we're going to send our wavetable to the return track. And now we're going to enable the send. This is going to send to itself. So we're creating a feedback loop. And with the reverb, we can create some cool... Um, feedback effects. I'm going to send it all the way. We're going to start hearing that feedback uh, sound and I'm going to start playing with the parameters of the reverb. Let's stop it. Here's our feedback. Okay, we're starting to go crazy there. You can do a lot of cool stuff with just the feedback loop. Let's turn it down. And let's turn this down. That's it. So that's the feedback loop. Watch out, because it can go insane. Uh, I would recommend playing with some distortion things, just one guitar notes, right? Like you uh, getting a guitar close to an amp, very distorted. You can get all those feedback loops. Or even take two phones, call each other, put them next to each other, you got a feedback loop. So just look out, limiter, keep your ears safe. And you can always turn down the volume, mute it if uh, necessary. Okay, next trick. Okay, so here I have just a simple kind of live performance uh, project. And let's say we're in the studio recording or we're in a live show and we need to send headphone mix to our different band members or the artists that we're producing. Uh, so let's see how to do that. So first of all, I have a return track here. This is going to be our headphone mix for bogus name Frank. Okay. Now I'm going to send my audio, my uh, return track, external out, and then to one of the tracks that is connected to my interface that is actually going out to the headphones of Frank. Uh, I'm going to do output config. Let's do mono. Let's say 7, 8. Let's say he's going through output number 7. 
so I'm gonna just send to him. Now simply I'm gonna do the mix with the, with the send knobs as much as he wants or they want uh, the bass, the music, right, the drums and so on. If we have another band member, let's say it's uh, Jessica. Okay, she's playing the drums, let's say. We're gonna external out. This is goes to number eight. And again, we're gonna, we can do a deal. Let's say she needs the kick and the snare a bit louder. And the bass not as loud, music and extra effects. All right, so each one have its own headphone mix and each one is also going out to their own headphone mix. We can turn it up, down separately. We can do that as much as we need. Um, up to 12 return tracks, but there's also ways to do it on regular tracks. Right now we'll keep it on return tracks. Uh, same thing goes with metronomes. So metronome, I can just load or a metronome loop, a click track, or I can make my own with a drum rack. Let's load a drum rack here. Let's load uh, just some sounds. Let's go misc percussion. Let's say this, we're gonna take this, we're gonna copy it here with option. Let's transpose it down like two semitones and we'll make something like this. Let's solo that. Right, you can use any sound you want. You can also say one, two, recall yourself saying one, two, three, four. Now we can send it uh, to as much as we want to, the, uh, to our headphone mixes. Now, it's also important in this case, I don't want to hear, I don't want the audience to hear it. Or in the studio, I don't need to come out from the speakers, it's only for the headphones. So I'm going to send audio to sends only, and that will make sure it doesn't output, only outputs through the actual return tracks. So that's uh, for metronome, a uh, click track, and you can also do uh, cues. If, you have, if you're in a live show with a band, and you need to cue them like, a uh, break is coming and you want to launch it manually, you can record yourself saying things and only send it to the headphone mix for cues. Uh, so that's uh, headphone mixes and click track. Let's check out the next one. Okay, so here I have a project, uh, some music, and I have all my tracks grouped together. I have three, the first three return tracks are just the stuff we talked about, like reverb, delay, and stuff like that. I do have, a, for each group, I have a return track that I created, and I also sent it, so the drums are all here. Bass, synths, and vocals. Yeah. Okay, nice. Now, I did also set up, like we just saw, I set up all the tracks to sends only. So this is more for bussing, actual bussing, meaning that we send everything to the return track, this is where we mix things. Uh, but what's nice about this is you can kind of do uh, emulate bleeding between the different tracks, what happened in the past with recording, or so even some mixer systems, mixer uh, consoles, that the tracks will bleed into each other, which create a nice effect, kind of like more for live music. In this case, I'm using an example of electronic music. So I enable the sense like we saw before, and each bus is actually bleeding, is being sent a tiny bit to the other buses. So in the drums we can hear a tiny bit of the bass and the synths and the vocals, and the bass we can hear a tiny bit of the drum synth and vocals, and so on and so forth. So uh, this will allow you to just have the mix, kind of like do serial mixing uh, on each one, and then everything is sent to the master, but also bleeding into each track. And again, I'm reminding you, the tracks themselves are on sends only. So the only output I actually get is from the buses and they go all to the master track, but it does allow us to do this kind of bleeding uh, into each other. A bit more uh, advanced mixing technique. You don't necessarily have to use this, just it's a cool thing to know uh, if you want to do some bleeding into uh, kind of tracks into each other. Sweet, let's check out the last trick. And this one kind of goes a bit crazy. Actually, I do see this project is in 9.99, huh? Eh, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just going crazy. Let's uh, listen what's going on here. Okay. Let's turn on the metal on. Okay. It's just a matter of resolution. It's like 124 and a half, something like that, if you divide it all. I don't know why I did this. It was, I think it was 
for my students to show them something. Whatever. Let's go to the last trick. Okay, so this one is just going crazy. I have a rack here that you can download from my website called Technomaker. If I open it up, it's just a crazy combination of racks inside of racks and effects and bunch of stuff, just Ableton stuff. Now, what it does is that here I have just one kick loop. If I send it to the return track, it's going to create chords for us just from the sound of the kick. Let's send it. And I have a chord selector here, I can select different chords. And play around with the sound and all that. So just to, sh again, showcase, you can do almost anything you want with return tracks, even though they only, can only have effects, audio effects on them. So Technomaker, you can get it from my website just an uh, audio effect track. Sweet. And uh, that's it for uh, 10 tricks or uses with return tracks you should know. Let me know how you use the return tracks if you have any tricks uh, to share in the comments and I'll catch you next time.